Hello. Good evening. Hello. Hi, Hello. Hello. How are you? Hi, Mario. Fine. Hi. Hello. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening. How are you today? Doing good? Uh, I'm good. Thank you. I'm doing good too. Thank you for asking too. Alrighty. We are two days away from finishing the module. Estamos a dos días de terminar el módulo. Today, I have some practice. Well, I have a video for you to practice your listening. Tengo un video para que practiquemos sus habilidades de listening. Okay. Sí, que, yes, exercising your listening abilities. Sé que es un video bastante avanzado, pero mi interés es que ustedes nos quitemos el miedo, intentemos comprender todo lo posible, porque si pueden con lo difícil desde el inicio, después ya no les va a costar. And we are going to be focusing on accents. Nos vamos a enfocar en acentos porque today's topic, because today's topic, el tema de hoy, is rising and falling intonation. We will also review WH questions with the present continuous. ¿Se recuerdan que estuvimos viendo el present continuous ING? Yes. Yes. Nice. Cool. So, we will continue talking about the present continuous. Vamos a darle continuación al tema del present continuous. Ahora vamos a aprender a hacer preguntas. Vamos a ver cómo es... Eh, más preguntas WH, aparte de las que ya aprendimos a hacer last Thursday. Last Thursday aprendimos a hacer yes or no. So questions you answer yes or no to with the verb. Today we will learn questions in the present continuous with WH. ¿Se recuerdan cuáles son las WH questions? Yes, what, yes. Why? what, where, where, who, who, which. Nice, okay. Uh, when, mm. when, when, oh. Okay. Oh. yep, and we add how right there. Le agregamos el how, aunque solo sea una, oh. una H question, pero we also put it in there. Nice. Esas son las WH questions. Y we will learn how to do it with the present continuous. Vamos a aprender a hacerlas con el present continuous. So, este día les voy a compartir un video para las personas que se están uniendo. So that we can start our day, me gustaría compartirles un video about pronunciation. Compartirles un video sobre pronunciación. Este es un video, no les voy a mentir, un poco avanzado, un poco complicadito, pero mi intención es de que ustedes puedan ir reconociendo acentos. Los acentos son una de las partes un poco más complicadas porque hay tantos acentos en el mundo, pero este día vamos a hablar de los U.S. accents, los acentos en Estados Unidos. Más que todo para que ustedes escuchen, Intenten comprender, try to understand. Yeah, yeah, This is yeah, yeah. a difficult video, como les digo. So, it's okay if we don't understand everything. Está bien si no comprendemos todo. Pero vamos a comenzar a adaptar el oído, right? A escuchar inglés. So, no se me asusten. But this is how we will start. Es como vamos a comenzar. Y vamos a sentir más fácil el resto de los temas de hoy. So, We are going to start by watching the video. Podemos verlo una segunda vez si ustedes necesitan. Y then we will continue with our topics for today. Y después vamos a continuar con nuestros temas de hoy. Esto es más que todo como una práctica para iniciar. All righty, let's watch it. 
I never thought I had an accent, but everyone else told me I did, so I never really understood my accent. But we say soda pop, and that was weird, I guess. The great thing about Oklahoma is it's really this confluence of a whole bunch of different parts of the country. So the, the northern part of the state is really like the plains, so people kind of have that flat Iowa accent. People always know I'm from the Midwest when I say bagel. But if you get down south to the Little Dixie portion, it has a much more of a southern drawl. Elon gave me those vowels a little bit. And saying y'all every sentence. How y'all doing today? Y'all want to go to Waffle House? Come on over, we'll go to Waffle House. It's just like real round in your mouth, and you're just like, hey y'all, how we doing tonight? Um, are you guys going to go down to the game this weekend? I'm so excited. Like Joshua's doing real great this year. Everybody talks really slow, especially compared to New Yorkers. Most New Yorkers are loud. You got to fit your way into a conversation most often times when you're in New York. Vermont's accent is uh, very unique and it's hard to slip into unless you're talking to another person who like grew up farming but the phrase that I can say in my accent is always oh sure bud oh sure. People from California kind of have like they say like Colorado doesn't really have a typical accent. Lots of people say that it has no accent, but you'll definitely get called out if you say Colorado. It's Colorado. So I've been told from people in New York that my state has an accent. Some people go Chicago. I don't think we do. There's parts that I can hear like a little bit of a twang and kind of sound like this. Some people in New Mexico have accents, depending on what part of the state you're from. People in the South tend to sound a little bit more like they could be from Texas. Really wide syllables, really kind of drawn out phrases. It's a little sing-songy, like a little bit valley girl almost. I'm from New Mexico and I love eating burritos. You wanna go skiing up on mountain? Pass me those taters. <laughs> I don't know, I mean like there's cowboys, you know, there's horses. I don't know, because I don't feel like I have an accent. I went home a couple of years ago and was watching home videos of my sister and I, and we had to like do a weather forecast as like little kids, and we'd be like, there's a big hunt coming from the, the left coast, but don't worry, because we don't know that it's coming. And people would be like, what are you saying? I can put on the, you gotta park the car and hop the yacht and give the god a quarter for some chowder. That's a standard Boston accent right there. Any E-R would have an A-H at the end. It's kind of like, Boston, but I'm a bit more drunk. Like, we gotta go up to Baja, but to get some lobster supper. My mom has this kind of strange, half French Canadian, half Boston accent that sounds like peanut characters. Bwomp, bwomp. Oh, if you're from North Dakota, you've got some long O's. Oh yeah, you betcha. Yeah, hang on to your R's a little too. It gets a little bit thicker the older you are. Your grandma sounds a little bit like this. Your mom might be a little bit softer. I'm from Wisconsin. Go pack, go. It kind of gets like up here. Go pack. I say big. I have some eggs and a big. The best example of the Wyoming accent I feel like I've ever seen was in Brokeback Mountain. One curve in the road, and they missed it. So if you live in Washington State, no one ever says they have an accent. They all think they speak pretty normal, which is kind of true. Just kind of middle of the road. Sort of like Delaware itself. But they also kind of have like a country hit kind of thing to them. So they'll say like, Washington? Like, I'm gonna wash my hands? And you're like, wash? What kind of a word is that? We pronounce our cheese as G, so we say like Connecticut instead of Connecticut. I feel like Michigan's typical accent um, is very nasally. Hi, like that type of vibe. So if I'm from like Northside Kauai, I'm going to sound something like this. People say that us Marylanders have accents, but I don't think we have an accent. Idaho doesn't have a really distinct accent. There's no accent in Indiana. This might be very biased, but I don't think we, I really don't think we have an accent. I don't hear it but I get reminded of it when I travel. I mean, I, I think this is normal. It's a perfect neutral Pacific Northwest tone. Sarah Palin does not have a typical Alaska accent. She's not really from there. She grew up in, I don't know, Kansas or something. My husband laughs at me because I say wolf instead of wolf. Our accents are all over the place. The first one that comes to my head is a Latino one. Me voy a coger un cortadito. <laughs> There's the St. Louis accent where we say certain things like, Waters and water. Where I'm from, they like to say Haina or Mayan. That shirt over there is Mayan. From Philly, they like to say water and you guys. But in Pittsburgh, 
Instead of yous guys, they say yins. What are yins doing? North Carolina is, is it's, it's an interesting accent. It's just got a little bit of a drawl. It's a little lazier. It's very slow pace, very good, very nice. There's Tross in South Carolina, which is more like this. It's more smooth. Might have a daughter named Darcy. And then you got the real squealy, squealy southern accent. And then you just got the very just, hey, how you doing? God bless. Ok, we watched a brief video. Creo que se unieron bastantes personas en lo que estábamos viendo el video. Um, what I was trying to tell you. Lo que les estaba queriendo decir es que yo sé que este video estuvo bastante complicado, pero es para que nos empecemos a acostumbrar a escucharlo, right? To listen to the accents, to listen to English. Escuchar los acentos, escuchar el inglés, right? So, ¿lo sintieron muy complicado? Do you want to watch it again? ¿Lo quieren ver nuevamente? What do you think? ¿Qué piensan? Any comments, questions, preguntas, comentarios? ¿Cómo se llama el video? Este video se llama 50 people show their uh, state's accents. Entonces tenemos a una persona de cada estado, right? From the United States. So it is a super great practice. Es una super buena práctica que veamos videos como este, que aunque al inicio no se los okay. com, no los comprendamos del todo, uh, so that you can get your ear used to it para acostumbrarnos al oído, right? De escuchar el inglés. Any other questions, comments, answers? I'm sorry, uh, observations. pudieron ver eh, los subtítulos que iban saliendo con el video en inglés. Sí, se, se lo yes. deben ver. Nice. Okay. That's important también. Eso nos ayuda a tener un poquito más de vocabulary. A veces no alcanzamos a entender lo que dicen por el acento o porque va muy rápido, pero tener los subtítulos en inglés, pues, it also helps us, right? También nos ayuda. Yes. Nice. Yes. All right, so, me gustaría que lo volviéramos a ver solo porque cuando lo comenzamos a ver creo que estábamos como 15 o menos personas y ahorita veo que estamos 22. So, I would like for us to watch it again. Yes, teacher, please. Nice, awesome. Yep, And especially porque pues estamos más personas. Me gustaría que lo vieran todo eh, porque es una buena práctica, right? And if you have any questions after watching it again, we can review it. Si tienen preguntas después de verlo nuevamente, podemos revisarlas. Okay. I never thought I had an accent, but everyone else told me I did. So I never really understood my accent. But we say soda pop and that was weird, I guess. The great thing about Oklahoma is it's really this confluence of a whole bunch of different parts of the country. So the, the northern part of the state is really like the plains, so people kind of have that flat Iowa accent. People always know I'm from the Midwest when I say bagel. But if you get down south to the Little Dixie portion, it has a much more of a southern drawl. Elongating those vowels a little bit. And saying y'all every sentence. How y'all doing today? Y'all want to go to Waffle House? Come on over, we'll go to Waffle House. It's just like real round in your mouth, and you're just like, hey y'all, how we doing tonight? Um, are you guys going to go down to the game this weekend? I'm so excited. Like Joshua's doing real great this year. Everybody talks really slow, especially compared to New Yorkers. Most New Yorkers are loud. You got to fit your way into a conversation most often times when you're in New York. Vermont's accent is uh, very unique and it's hard to slip into unless you're talking to another person who like grew up farming. But the phrase that I can say in my accent is always, oh sure bud, oh sure. People from California kind of have like, they say like. Colorado doesn't really have a typical accent. Lots of people say that it has no accent, but you'll definitely get called out if you say, 
Colorado. It's Colorado. So I've been told from people in New York that my state has an accent. Some people go Chicago. I don't think we do. There's parts that I can hear like a little bit of a twang and kind of sound like this. Some people in New Mexico have accents, depending on what part of the state you're from. People in the South tend to sound a little bit more like they could be from Texas. Really wide syllables, really kind of drawn out phrases. It's a little sing-songy, like a little bit valley girl almost. I'm from New Mexico and I love eating burritos. You wanna go skiing up on mountain? Pass me those taters. <laughs> I don't know, I mean like there's cowboys, you know, there's horses. I don't know, because I don't feel like I have an accent. I went home a couple of years ago and was watching home videos of my sister and I, and we had to like do a weather forecast as like little kids, and we'd be like, there's a big hurricane coming from the, the left coast, but don't worry because we don't know that it's coming. And people would be like, what are you saying? I can put on the, you gotta park the car and hop the yacht and give the guy a quarter for some chowder. That's a standard Boston accent right there. Any E-R would have an A-H at the end. It's kind of like, Boston, but cooler and a bit more drunk. Like, we gotta go up to Baja, but I get some lobster supper. My mom has this kind of strange, half French Canadian, half Boston accent that sounds like peanut characters. Well, if you're from North Dakota, you've got some long O's. Oh, yeah, you betcha. Yeah, hang on to your R's a little, too. It gets a little bit thicker the older you are. Your grandma sounds a little bit like this. Your mom might be a little bit softer. I'm from Wisconsin. Go, pack, go. It kind of gets, like, up here. Go, pack. I say big. I have some eggs and a big. The best example of the Wyoming accent I feel like I've ever seen was in Brokeback Mountain. One curve in the road, and they missed it. So if you live in Washington State, no one ever says they have an accent. They all think they speak pretty normal, which is kind of true. Just kind of middle of the road. Sort of like Delaware itself. But they also kind of have like a country hit kind of thing to them. So they'll say like, Washington, Like, I'm gonna wash my hands. And you're like, wash? What kind of a word is that? We pronounce our T's as D's, so we say like Connecticut instead of Connecticut. I feel like Michigan's typical accent um, is very nasally. Hi, like that type of vibe. So if I'm from like Northside Kauai, I'm going to sound something like this. People say that us Marylanders have accents, but I don't think we have an accent. Idaho doesn't have a really distinct accent. There's no accent in Indiana. This might be very biased, but I don't think we, I really don't think we have an accent. I don't hear it but I get reminded of it when I travel. I mean, I, I think this is normal. It's a perfect neutral Pacific Northwest tone. Sarah Palin does not have a typical Alaska accent. She's not really from there. She grew up in, I don't know, Kansas or something. My husband laughs at me because I say wolf instead of wolf. Our accents are all over the place. The first one that comes to my head is a Latino one. Me voy a coger un cortadito. <laughs> There's the St. Louis accent where we say certain things like, Waters and water. Where I'm from, they like to say Haina or Mayan. That shirt over there is Mayan. From Philly, they like to say Wooder and Use Guys. But in Pittsburgh, instead of Use Guys, they say Yins. What are Yins doing? North Carolina is, is it's, it's an interesting accent. It's just got a little bit of a drawl. It's a little lazier. Just very slow pace, very good, very nice. There's Tross in South Carolina, which is more like this. It's more smooth. Yeah. Might have a daughter named Darcy. And then you got the real squealy, squealy Southern accent. And then you just got the very just, hey, how you doing? God bless. You have a good day now. All right, so we watched it again. Lo vimos nuevamente. What do you think? ¿Cuál consideran el más difícil? The easiest? ¿Pudieron comprender alguno? What do you think? I want to hear what you think. De Massachusetts te ha matado la risa. I know. I agree. Arriba de Boston. De Boston. Sí, de Boston. Yeah, sí. Hablan como que no, sin, sin pausa. ¿Verdad? Sin pausa, o sea, mucha, really... muchas palabras, así, o sea, mucho vocabulario, sin, como, que, como que van corriendo, como que bien raro el acento. Sí, es super El de raro. Texas, el de Texas yo no lo sentí tan, tan nativo de Texas, porque he escuchado hablar de personas de Texas, y, y como que más cantadito, como que, no sé. 
pero no lo sentí tan, tan complicado como en otra ocasión. Right, sí, es como que Texas es so big, como Texas es, Texas es tan grande, it could be a country, right? It could be itself a country, so incluso dentro de Texas hay un montón de acentos. So this was just an example, I agree. Um, hay un montón de, de accents within Texas y cabal, el de, el de Massachusetts is very difficult, very wordy. Dice, dice, ¿es, mi, ¿es mi oído o el de Nueva York un poco así como más, lo sentí como un poco más refinado quizás? Más gritado. Maybe, maybe, puede ser. Sí, I agree. They are, um, they're really, uh, it's a very professional city. Es una ciudad bastante profesional. So a lot of people, especially in New York City, So, está en New York, el estado, right? And then there's New York City, la ciudad. So, especially New York City, es un trade center, right? Es un lugar de negocios, de, de empresas. So, they do talk a little bit, like, more high-end, more professional. Okay. Y hablan bastante rápido, sobre todo. Esta persona hablaba un poco lento para ser de New York, pero they talk really fast. Alrighty. So, yep. El nombre de este video, como pudieron ver, fue 50 people show their U.S. states accents. And you can watch it as many times as you need. Lo pueden ir a ver cuando necesiten o pueden ver más videos de este tipo. Como les digo, es súper bueno para que ustedes practiquen su oído. All right. And with that practice, we are going to change our screen. Vamos a cambiar nuestra pantalla to our platform. Nos vamos a ir a la plataforma. And we'll start reviewing more about intonation. Vamos a estar eh, hablando más o revisando más sobre la entonación, about the way that we talk, la manera en la que hablamos, right? And especially where we apply emphasis, donde le ponemos énfasis, a las oraciones o a las palabras. Hi, everyone. In this class, you learn about rising and falling intonation in yes or no questions and WH questions. Let's get started by understanding intonation. Pitch is raising and lowering the tone of voice while speaking. The use of pitch is called intonation. Understanding English intonation will increase not only your spoken English competency, but your English comprehension as well. Intonation is used to convey meaning. For example, you have the same set of words in two separate sentences, but in one, the meaning may be different than in the other due to intonation. In this class, we'll focus on yes or no questions and WH questions and how intonation gives meaning. Let's listen and practice. Notice the intonation of yes or no and WS questions. Is she getting up? Are they sleeping? What's she doing? What are they doing? Well, there are many exceptions and rules to follow. In general, we can follow these two simple rules. For yes and no questions, there will be a rising intonation. For example, is she getting up? Are they sleeping? For WH questions, there will be a falling intonation. For example, what's she doing? What are they doing? This topic, along with all the other pronunciation topics, require careful listening and to practice. I would like for you to listen carefully for the okay. best and Volvamos un poco acá a los ejemplos y escribamos las reglas que escuchamos. So, we were able to notate two rules. 
dos reglas que, aunque no están escritas en piedra, y eso es bien importante, no, no, es importante que no nos clavemos con que siempre va a ser así, porque this can change. Sobre todo um, porque cuando estemos hablando con alguien más in a conversation, we're not thinking about the rules on how we need to ask questions. No estamos pensando en las reglas, right? Pero es algo que sí nos puede ayudar a sonar un poco más nativos, right? So, cuando estamos hablando de yes or no questions, the yes or no questions, is she getting up? Yes, she is. No, she's not, right? Are they sleeping? Yes, they are. No, they're not. Vamos a tener una rising intonation. Own rising pitch. Es lo mismo. Cuando hablemos de WH questions, what's she doing? What are they doing? Vamos hacia abajo, un falling intonation. Es una regla que podemos tomar en cuenta. No siempre va a ser así. Sí pueden haber excepciones. Imagínense que nos vemos a alguien en, en la calle y nos sorprende. Y, What you doing? Y puede ser, pues, rising, right? Pero ahí ya entramos en que es una sorpresa, en que nos da un pánico. One second. Denme un momentito. Perdón, les decía, pueden haber excepciones, right? There can be exceptions to the rules. Pueden haber excepciones. Y como les digo, va a depender muchísimo del contexto, who we are talking to, a quién le hablamos, uh, what the situation is, cuál es la situación. Pero digamos que in a normal conversation, in an everyday situation, en una conversación normal, en una situación del día a día, es una regla que podemos seguir para sonar un poco más nativos, right? So, yes or no questions, rising. Delete questions, falling. What's she doing? What are they doing? Is she getting up? Are they sleeping? See? ¿Sí? Any questions so far? ¿Alguna pregunta, observación, comentarios que tengan hasta ahorita? Dice. Sí. Y, y, el, la primera donde dice, she said, she getting up, ahí es, se está refiriendo como a levantarse, algo así. Yes, exactly. Sí, lo que pasa es que el, el verbo este de get es, es bien amplio, ¿verdad? Sí, sí, se puede ocupar para muchas cosas. Mucho uso. Uh -huh. En este caso, excellent question. Super buena pregunta. En este caso, getting up o oh, el hecho de get up, póngamelo en otro color. Más adelante ustedes lo van a ver, creo que no lo hemos visto con ustedes, phrasal verbs. Get up. Conjunto de un verbo con otra palabra, puede ser un adverbio, puede ser un adjetivo, puede ser un noun. Que, nos, que se vuelve una expresión. It turns into an expression. Lo van a ver más a profundidad más adelante. Pero pues eh, se considera un phrasal verb. So, get up, right? Significa levantarse. Get up from the ground. Get up from bed. Getting up, levantarse, right? Otro ejemplo de phrasal verb puede ser turn off. Apagar, right? Turn off the TV. Turn off the AC, el aire acondicionado. Uh, turn off the volume, bajemos el volumen, right? Puede significar una o un par de cosas y sirve como expresiones de un verbo 
plus otra palabra. Eso lo van a ver un poco más a profundidad más adelante. Pero sí, eh, get, es solito el verbo get, se usa para muchas cosas. Excelente. Any other observations, questions? Cualquier otra pregunta, observación. Are we good? Alrighty. In that case, let me clear the screen. Déjenme limpiar aquí la pantalla. Más adelante vamos a seguir haciendo ejercicios de reading, ejercicios de lectura, so that you can practice this, para que ustedes puedan practicar esto. Intonation, with questions, with uh, vocabulary, etc. Okay. I know. Continuamos entonces with a knowledge check. For this exercise, para este ejercicio, we're going to listen to the audio and we will choose if it is a falling or a rising intonation. Ya aprendimos la regla de que if it's a yes or no question, is rising. Si es una WH question, is falling. Pero también vamos a seguir practicando nuestro listening. So, lo que vamos a hacer es que vamos a escuchar el audio completo. Y ustedes van a intentar ir identificando solo al escucharlo. If it's a falling or rising intonation. Y después ustedes me pueden decir. One. Are you wearing a coat? Two. What are you doing now? Three. What time is it? Four. Is it midnight? Five. What color is his t-shirt? Six. Are you from Thailand? Alrighty. Now we will go ahead and listen again, reviewing the questions. Vamos a escuchar nuevamente, revisando las preguntas. Y ustedes me van a decir si es rising or falling. One. Are you wearing a coat? Rising or falling. Falling. Rising. 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 That's right. Are you wearing a coat? Hacemos un levantamiento al final, right? ¿Por qué más sabemos que es rising? ¿Cómo responderían ustedes esa pregunta? How would you answer? Yes. Yes, uh, are, yes, uh, yes, she is, I <laughs> yes, yes, I right? wearing a coat. Exactly. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Sí. Basically, es una yes or no questions. Y las yes or no questions siempre van a tener una intonation. Rising. Rising. Rising, yes. Yes or no questions tienen rising intonation. Okay, let's do the next one. Two. What are you doing now? Rising or falling? Rising. Uh, falling. 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 La persona que dijo rising, why? Por qué? What are you doing now? What are you doing now? Baja o sube al final? Baja. Entonces sería? Rising. Falling. ¿Por qué falling. rising? No, oh, sorry, it's falling. <laughs> exactly, yeah. That's right. Bajar, falling. Subir, yes. rising. Rising. Right. 
Perfect. Number three. Three. What time is it? Rising or falling? Falling. Rising. It's falling. Falling. Por qué rising? La persona que dijo rising. <laughs> what time is it? What time is it? What time is it? Oh, what time is it? What time is it? Sería rising. What time is it? Falling. Y además, ¿por qué? ¿Cómo contestaríamos esta pregunta? What time is it? How would you answer it, that question? ¿Cómo contestaríamos? 9.36. Exacto. So, is it a yes or no question? ¿Es una pregunta yes or no? No. No. Entonces, si es una WH, it's right 9.37. All right. Yeah. Y cuando es una WH question, el intonation is rising or falling. Falling. Right. Exactly. Eso nos ayuda también a identificar. Number four. Ah, okay. One second. Let's reload it. One, are you wearing a, what time is it? Four, is it midnight? Is it midnight? Rising or falling? Rising. 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 Exactly. Can I answer yes or no? Yes. 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 That's right. So it will be rising as well. Eso nos ayuda también a definir cuál es. Five. What color is his t-shirt? Rising or falling? Falling. 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 Right. falling. What color is this t-shirt? Si fuera rising. What color My is this t-shirt? Is color red. Exactly. Tenemos que dar una respuesta. So, falling. And finally, Six. Are you from Thailand? Are you from Thailand? Or are you from Thailand? It's rising. 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 Yes, I am. No one done. There we go. Anyone with any questions? This exercise. Alguna pregunta con este ejercicio? Comments, observations? Creo que una manera más comprensiva de entender el falling y el rising es la pregunta en esa actitud, que si se, que si se contesta sí o no, es rising. Si tiene una contestación un poquito más larga, es falling. Correcto, es lo que veíamos en nuestro video. ¿Cuál es el acento que vamos a ocupar when we are using WH questions? It's falling. Falling. Exactly. And with yes or no? Yes. Yeah, rising. Rising. That's right. Ese es el... Yes. Eh, lo que observo también yo, aparte de lo que mencionan los compañeros, es que generalmente las que son en, las que van en rising empiezan con el verbo to be, parece. ¿no? Correcto, porque todas las... Uh, sí. Si la mayoría, si no es que todas las yes or no questions comienzan con verb to be. That's right. Al menos de las que hemos visto hasta ahorita. Porque ya más adelante ustedes cuando comencemos a ver preguntas con do, con does, también pueden ser yes or no. Etc. Pero eso no lo hemos visto todavía. Okay. Aún no hemos llegado ahí. 
So those are super great observations. Alrighty. Let's move on to our WH questions. Vamos a hablar un poco más sobre las WH questions. Who wants to help me read the objective? Vamos a practicar leyendo el objetivo. ¿Quién quiere leer this lesson objective? Anyone that wants to participate. Cualquier persona que quiera participar and read the objective y leer el objetivo. Uh, me? Go ahead. Uh, by, the end of the, uh, by the end of this class, you will be able to ask an answer pres present continuous WH question. Additionally, you, you will practice a conversation between a boy and his mother, which illustrated WH question in context. Thank you so much, Gustavo. That is great. Awesome. A medida que ustedes más practiquen, más se involucren, más digan yo voy a leer, the easier it will be para ustedes hacer las pronunciaciones, read in a faster pace, leer de manera más rápida, que les sea más fácil. So that's great. Thank you, Gustavo. Thank you for participating. Es súper bueno para ustedes para acostumbrarse a leer y hablar. All right. Now let's get into the topic. Hi, everyone. In this class, you'll learn to ask and answer present continuous questions. Additionally, we will practice a conversation which illustrates how this topic is used in a real life setting. Let's get started by listening to a conversation between a boy and his mother which illustrates WH questions in context. Let's listen and practice. Hi, Mom. What are you doing, Steve? I'm cooking. Why are you cooking now? It's two o'clock in the morning. Well, I'm really hungry. What are you making? Pizza. Mmm, pizza. Now I'm getting hungry. Let's eat. Now, let's try to make sense of present continuous WH questions. We will typically use present continuous WH questions whenever we want to get information from an action that is in progress. For example, what are you doing right now? To form WH questions, we need to follow this formula. WH word plus verb to be plus subject plus the verb plus ing plus some kind of complement. If we look at the images on the screen, you can see a few WH questions. Let's analyze the first one. What's Victoria doing? We have a WH word, what. Then we have the verb to be, is. After that, we have the subject, Victoria. After that, we have the uh, verb in its ing form. And then we have a question mark. Then, of course, you can see the question being answered. She's sleeping now. Now, we're going to listen to the rest of the questions and answers. Let's listen and repeat. Los Angeles, 4 a.m. What's Victoria doing? She's sleeping right now. Mexico City, 6 a.m. What's Marcos doing? It's 6 a.m., so he's getting up. New York City, 7 a.m. What are Sue and Tom doing? They're having breakfast. Brasilia, 9 a.m. What's Celia doing? She's going to work. London, 12 noon. What are James and Anne doing? It's noon, so they're having lunch. Moscow, 3 p.m. What's Andre doing? He's working. Bangkok, 7 p.m. What's Permsak doing? He's eating dinner right now. Tokyo. 
9 p.m. What's Hiroshi doing? He's watching television. Your city. What are you doing? It's... So I'm... The last thing that I would like for you to do is to look at the images again and write questions and answers about them. For All right. So before we do that exercise, antes de que hagamos ese ejercicio, regresemos un poco a ver cómo vamos a hacer la forma de estas preguntas. Let's review again how we can build these questions, right? So in this example, we have what is Victoria doing? E. We have the WH word, what, the verb to be, it's, the subject, Victoria, y el verbo to be que ocupemos, el verb to be that we use, es correspondiente al subject, right? So, is, porque Victoria sería she. Si sería they, what are they doing? Nuestro verbo que es do, con ing, doing. Y podríamos poner algún complemento si así fuera el contexto o si nosotros quisiéramos también. What are they doing right now? Podría ser. Right? Y el question mark at the end. Veamos otro ejemplo. Volvamos a poner la fórmula aquí. So. The WH word. The WH question. plus the verb to be, plus the subject. Ya sabemos que el subject puede ser un noun, puede ser un, nom, eh, un proper name, o un noun, right? O un pronoun, he, she, it, they. So we have the WH question, the verb to be, the subject, the, whoops, the verb in the ing form, porque estamos viendo el present continuous, and complement. Puede que tengamos complement, puede que no. Y finalmente nuestra question. Teniendo eso en cuenta, si usamos una oración normal, vamos a hacer el ejercicio que hicimos con las yes or no questions. Y yo les pongo eh, la respuesta. Les voy a dar la respuesta y ustedes me van a decir qué pregunta haría. So, let's say um, Axel is going to the gym tomorrow. ¿De qué manera se les ocurre a ustedes? Oops. ¿De qué manera se les ocurre a ustedes que podría haber sido la Pregunta para yo dar esa respuesta. ¿O ¿Cómo lo podemos convertir en una pregunta? Is Axel going to the gym tomorrow? Nice. That's super good. Eso es súper bueno en un verb to be. Pero si tenemos que usar WH questions, what, when, how, where? Where? When? Where? 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 Where is? Where is going? Is, is going Axel tomorrow? No. Where is? Where is going? Mm -hmm. So, tenemos where WH is? question. Where? Right? Pongámoslo aquí. Where? Es nuestra WH question. Nuestro verb to be es is. ¿Quién es el subject? Axel. Axel. Right. And then, verb to be, ¿cuál es? Going. Going. Going, y what else? What else can we add? To the gym tomorrow. Tomorrow. Pero si digo to the gym, ya estoy diciendo. To the gym. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Where is Axel going tomorrow? That's right. Porque lo que quiero saber es a dónde, right? Where? Si yo quiero poner también, puedo hacerlo usando when. 
¿cómo podría hacer una pregunta usando when? When is Axel going to the gym? Exacto, yes, that's excellent. So, veamos. WH question, when, right? Verb to be y el subject son el mismo. Is Axel... Nuestro verbo es el mismo, going. Recuerden que lo estamos sacando de la respuesta. Axel is going to the gym tomorrow. To the gym. Simplemente queremos saber dos cosas distintas, right? Where is Axel going tomorrow? Alex is going to the gym tomorrow. When is Axel going to the gym? Alex is going to the gym tomorrow, right? A las dos las respondemos. Solo que preguntamos detalles distintos. Veamos otro ejemplo para que nos quede un poquito más claro. La respuesta es María is swimming at the lake. ¿Qué pregunta haríamos para que nos respondieran eso? Where is? Where is? Ok. Where is who? Where is swimming? Where is swimming? Nos where? faltaría el subject. María o she? Where is she swimming? Where is, where is Maria swimming? Nice. Okay. Where is Maria swimming? Exacto. Where is Maria or where is she? También funciona. Where is she swimming? Y Maria is swimming at the lake. Excellent. ¿Qué otra pregunta podemos hacer? Excellent. So, de esta respuesta, esta es la pregunta correcta. Super bien. So, you were able to transform it. Ustedes la pudieron transformar. Una, uh, algo súper bueno, una, un ejercicio súper bueno que nos sirve es también intentar buscar preguntas adicionales. So, Quería ver si a alguien se le ocurría, aunque no fuera la respuesta, es What is Maria What doing? What is Maria doing? Uh -huh. Exacto. Maria is swimming at the lake, right? Siempre hacemos una WH question, verb to be, subject, y un ING verb. Quizás no necesariamente eso, pero esa pregunta nos podría dar esa respuesta, right? Excellent. Ok. Any questions hasta aquí? ¿Alguna pregunta que tengan? Observación, duda. Otherwise, intentemos hacer un ejercicio. De otra manera, veamos e intentemos hacer un ejercicio. We have this picture right here. Vimos el audio para estos ejercicios. About what they were doing, right? Podemos ver en la imagen lo que ellos están haciendo. We have Victoria, Marcos, Sue, and Tom in New York City. Celia in Brazil, in Brasilia. James and Anne in London. And Andre in Moscow, Russia. So, veamos el ejemplo. Number one, who is sleeping now? And B, Victoria is sleeping now. We can see right here. Victoria is sleeping. So let's try to do number two. What's Marcus wearing? Let's see. B, what is he wearing? ¿Y cuál es la manera correcta de decirlo? Number one, two, or three? Three. He's wearing pajama. He's wearing pajamas. That's right. ¿Por qué es la manera correcta? Porque tenemos he... 
is subject, verb to be, wearing, verbo con ing y el complement, pajamas, right? We're ready. Who is having breakfast? Who's eating in this picture? Who's having breakfast? Sue and Tom. Sue and Tom, right? Sue and Tom, they're eating and it's 7 a.m. Siete de la mañana. So they're having breakfast. What about Celia? What is Celia wearing? Is she wearing a suit, a dress, or jeans? Está usando un traje, a dress, or jeans? Suit. Suit. Suit, right? Suit. What about James? Why are James and Anne having lunch? Let's see James and Anne. James and Anne in London at noon. So why are they having lunch? Because it's noon? This one or number three? Number three. Number three. That's right. James and Anne are have lunch? No, porque no tenemos nuestro verb ing. James and Anne are having. They are having right now. ing verb. And finally, where is Andre working? We have Andre here. Where is he working? In Spain, Moscow, or London? Let's see the image. Where is Andre? Moscow is number two. Moscow in Russia. What did we miss? Sue and Tom. What happened? Let's see. Sue and Tom. What do you think it is? Será un punto? Are we missing anything? Nos falta algo? ¿Qué creen que no tenemos bien? What could it be? Sue and Tom. What is it? Let's review. Ah, ok. I got it. So, nos están pidiendo una respuesta completa. Let me share my screen with you. So, nos están pidiendo que pongamos que Sue and Tom are having breakfast. Sabemos que es Sue and Tom. Tenemos la razón. Simplemente tenemos que incluir la respuesta correcta, la respuesta completa, perdón. Uy, esta pantalla no es. Esta. Sue and Tom are having breakfast. There we go. Así que ya saben, cuando ustedes estén completando su plataforma, les pide una respuesta completa. Sue and Tom are having breakfast. Alrighty. So, it is 10 p.m. Ya son las 10, súper rápido. Mañana vamos a continuar reviewing este ejercicio por si alguien tiene alguna duda o también lo pueden poner en el grupo de WhatsApp. Y I can help you from there. Y ya mañana vamos a continuar viendo más sobre este tema y otros más. Thank you so much for joining. Los veré mañana. Ok, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Bye bye.